Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to another Warzone Academy video. In today's video, we are taking a stance on the hotly contested debate of what is better in Warzone, controller or keyboard and mouse. While we talk about this, we've got some gameplay in the background of me dropping 30 bombs on both controller and keyboard and mouse within this past week. But as we delve through this argument, we're going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of both inputs. And at the very end, I'm going to be telling you which one I think is better in Warzone and whether or not you should switch. If you guys enjoy this style of in-depth video, it's a little bit of a different one, but it's a really fun conversation to have. Make sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe if you want to see more. And I do want to give a quick shout out and thank you to the sponsor of today's video, and that is Keeps. We've been working with Keeps for quite a while on this channel. They've been great supporters, and I've heard great results from members of the community. For those of you that don't know what Keeps is, it is your number one one-stop shop for all things balding and hair loss prevention. For those of you who don't know, two out of three men experience some form of balding by the age of 35, and prevention is the only cure. I've started to look into it. I've actually done some research myself, and they say by the time you start to see some thinning, that means roughly about 50% of that hair is already gone. So prevention is the cure. If you guys are interested in finding out more about Keeps, they have offer the only two FDA approved drugs for hair loss and balding prevention. And fortunately, you don't need to leave your house. You can just go down to the description to keeps.com slash Iceman Isaac. That is K E E P S dot com slash Iceman Isaac. Get an online consultation, figure out what products are right for you, and get it cheaper than all the alternatives straight to your doorstep. No awkward in person consultations. Once again, that's down in the description and the pinned comment. And I want to thank Keeps for all the support of the channel and sponsoring today's video. All right, so who the heck am I? Why am I someone who can talk about controller versus keyboard and mouse? Wait, wait, why does my opinion matter at all? While I am not a highest level pro, I'm not a top earning pro, let's just get right into it. On controller, I have a lot of experience. First off, this whole channel started by me being the number one Hanzo on Overwatch, a game with over 20 million players at the time I was playing on console, which is where I was ranked. I was the number one ranked player for Hanzo, which is a sniper, and I played a lot of other accounts, made top 500 consistently on controller on PS4. On Blackout, which is the previous BR to Warzone, I had the solos world record for the most kills in a single game for multiple, multiple months in a row. And then on top of that, I have multiple 30 plus kill games on Warzone like you're seeing in the background. Now, keyboard and mouse. Currently, I've got a pretty good track record for myself on keyboard and mouse on Warzone. Uh, I was also a top 500 in Overwatch. And then on Warzone right now, I am one of the top 25 earners in 2021 out of the entire world. And then in terms of keyboard and mouse players, I am in the top five for 2021. So I'm not the best player in the world by any means, but I, I am a student of the game. I really enjoy uh, both inputs and I'm, I'm, I'm skilled on both. Uh, so I think I've got some really good insight into what feels good on one, but uh, what holds me back on another. Now, quick disclaimer, we are not talking about you know who is better no one is inherently better because of the device they put in their hands and we're also not talking about um what device is better console versus pc you're lying to yourself if you're not saying pc is better now you're not going to go leaps and bounds just by buying a pc yes the frame rate helps yes the fov helps but you're not going to improve that much there are guys like reader who recently in World Series of Warzone absolutely dumpstered multiple PC players, whether it's controller or keyboard and mouse, by him playing on a stock DualShock. He's, he's a demon. Um, but there is an advantage playing on PC over console, no doubt in my mind. Um, what I don't want this to turn into in the comment section is some of these weird, classist, elitist, like almost feudal level of like, ah, North America versus EU. I want to talk about the mechanics of the game and how these actually benefit you. So feel free to have an educated conversation down below. None of the ad hominem arguments towards each other. Don't be throwing names and stuff. Uh, we're all here to get better. That's what the Academy is about and uh, staying simply better while you're at it. Okay, so let's talk about it first off. Controller, that's some of the gameplay you're going to be seeing in the background. Uh, let's first off talk about the disadvantages of controller. Because if you haven't played in a while, or maybe you're a keyboard and mouse player, and especially if you're a controller player, you're going to love to hear me talk about this. Um, there are a lot of things to controller that suck. First off, you are using your thumb to aim versus your arm or your wrist or your entire mouse pad. I will never say that aim assist should not be a part of the game. Aim assist is completely necessary. If you ever played without it, it's a fun challenge, but you need it. Uh, whether or not it's overpowered is something we can get into later, but aiming with your thumb sucks when compared to aiming with your entire arm or your wrist. Um, to go alongside of that, the ergonomics of a controller is just straight terrible. 
Uh, the fact that basically your entire left hand is minimized to aiming down sight, maybe your utility, and then that's about it. In the middle of a gunfight, your right hand has to do so much. And that's why I so strongly advise into getting a scuff controller. Now, this isn't an ad. It's simply for the fact that if, you, if you're in a gunfight, and you can look at my hand cam now, I've, I've pulled it up to where this is live. If you need to aim during a gunfight, your right hand cannot leave this. And so you need, if you ever need to switch weapons, reload, crouch, jump, all of that. That's so clunky when compared to this, where I can WASD, and I've got all these other keys that I can be pressing while I'm moving and while I'm aiming with my right hand, and my left hand is completely free. Alternatives to that are obviously buying a scuff controller that would allow you to have paddles on the back to remap those face buttons or playing claw which gets really uncomfortable where you bring that front finger over the top it's what i used to do before buying a scuff but on the whole the ergonomics of a controller at the highest level where you're trying to get the most out of your movement suck if you're just playing an rpg it's not that bad but uh it's pretty terrible at the highest level uh recoil control at range especially when you have zero aim assist once again that thumb is just a limiting factor recoil control is very difficult even for a game like cod at very long ranges when no aim assist plays a part recoil control on controller is very difficult even for the average player and even for a higher level player when i'm trying to track someone at very very far distances even if the gun has a little bit of a bounce uh, and then final disadvantage is aim assist inconsistencies now aim assist is a huge advantage but when aim assist breaks, when aim assist doesn't work around certain features around Warzone, there are certain parts of map that you may notice it breaking, it will completely throw your entire gunfight. Uh, aim assist not working through stairways, not working at the domed roofs at Superstore. There are plenty of parts across the map that I have vivid memories of throwing because of aim assist inconsistencies. Now let's talk about the advantage of controller. First and foremost, what we're just talking about, aim assist. Aim assist at close range for controllers is incredible and frankly a little broken. For a game like Warzone where the time to kill is so incredibly quick, the game is unforgiving. If you're off target for a moment in a close range gunfight against a good player, you're going to die. That's part of the reason why, reason why movement is so important in this game. You see guys like Joe Woe who are snapping people's aim assist and it, it's allowing them to win gunfights they otherwise shouldn't. But in general, unless you're playing against a complete demon, your aim assist isn't going to break. And if you're holding that, you've got good centering, you're going to win a gunfight at close range if you aim down sight on them first. Now, the next big advantage of a controller is movement. WASD is clunky. It is binary. It is 100% or it is nothing. There is no walking slowly. There is no, like, creeping up. There's, you know, maybe you're on the edge of the building and you just want to see over. There have been plenty of times on keyboard and mouse where I have sent myself over the edge, or as controller with auto attack sprint, the, the full 360 degree motion of both your right and left stick. Movement on controller is so much fun, and it is a huge, huge advantage. Now, let's move on to keyboard and mouse, starting off once again with the disadvantages. First off, there is an insane skill ceiling and skill floor. The worst player on keyboard and mouse, the worst probably 1%, 10% is going to be worse than the worst 10% on controller. Now, I realize it's more expensive to own a PC. It's, you know, more expensive to have all these peripherals, but money doesn't stop you from sucking at video games at all. Um, and when you have zero mechanical skill and zero tracking on keyboard and mouse, it's going to show and you have no assistance whatsoever. On the other hand, at the absolute elite keyboard and mouse players who have mastered it who have this not only years of training but just this genetic disposition to be freaks of nature the the skill ceiling is incredible but on the whole it takes a lot of training it takes a lot of uh genetic blessings to to you know just be that mentally cracked and it, with hand-eye coordination it's it's a huge disadvantage it you have zero assistance whatsoever and that's where the the second disadvantage is you have zero margin for error at close range when i'm in my flow state if i'm playing my best i will not lose a gunfight like when i'm playing on control or keyboard and mouse and i'm absolutely in the flow state playing out of my mind i will not lose but if i lose focus for a second man if i fall off target for a fraction of a second i lose that gunfight the 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 time to kill is too unforgiving and especially against aim assist players at close range if they don't miss a bullet, 
even if I get the first shot off, but then I get off frame for just a fraction of a second and maybe miss two bullets, I will lose that gunfight. There is zero margin for error at close range with keyboard and mouse, and it does nothing to help you. The other disadvantage is movement. Like I was talking about earlier, WASD is binary. It's either a zero or 100%. At the highest level, you have players who can snap left and right and really do those 90 degree turns and get some great movement in. I've, I've got some pretty solid movement with controller, I mean, with uh, keyboard and mouse. But for the average player, it pales in comparison to the smooth movement that you can do with thumbsticks. But there are a lot of advantages to keyboard and mouse, and that's someone who plays it a lot, and I'm, I'm going to admit it. The first off is dynamic sensitivity. And what that means is the average keyboard and mouse player, or just any keyboard and mouse player, does not have a set sensitivity. Like on controller, I am 6, 6, and 0.8. On keyboard and mouse, while I have a sensitivity, it's all based off of how slowly I move my mouse. If I'm moving it slow for a really refined shot, maybe tracking or sniping from far away, but if I hear something behind me, I can snap that arm as fast as I need to to whip around and look behind me. While that comes with a skill ceiling, you don't have that flexibility on controller. When you max deflect that stick, when you're trying to turn around, you can't turn any faster without messing with your sense, which may affect your, like, you know, your precision in other gunfights. Mouse and keyboard definitely has that advantage with the variable sensitivity. On top of that, the snaps and flicks, man. When you are hitting your snaps and flicks, like watch this clip, you know, behind me with the MAC-10, the spray transfer when it hits and you snap, even looking at it in slow-mo, nothing beats. That's what I'm talking about. In the flow state of playing with mouse and keyboard, you just can't do that on controller. And then finally, uh, actually, I've got two more um, advantages for mouse and key. The one is long range tracking and sniping. So I'm talking about past the point where aim assist goes away. It's back to the whole thumb versus arm thing. When someone's when you're trying to snipe someone so far away, it's thumb versus arm, and it's it's really not even comparable. Uh, when aim assist is a factor, there's a little bit of mitigation there. But when aim assist is out of the picture because they're so far away, keyboard and mouse has such a massive advantage. Uh, and then finally, the biggest advantage uh, for me, at least in terms of keyboard and mouse, is customization and resources. So you can trade up your controller, get a scuff. You can customize your scuff however you want. But there's a little bit of limitation. There are dozens of peripheral companies for keyboard and mouse and you can have a certain keyboard a certain mouse into certain mouse pads wireless wired it's there's a lot more customization and on top of that there's also aim trainers to go along with it like aim lags uh kovacs and frankly a lot more pc games than there are console games uh which i, I believe honestly is a huge huge advantage for lifelong players not just warzone there are a couple things i want to mention that are ties that might surprise some people uh, i think it's a pretty even competition between controller and keyboard and mouse at mid-range gunfights um unless someone is on a head glitch and i think the advantage goes to keyboard and mouse there um mid-range as long as aim assist is still a factor i'm talking 30 40 50 60 70 80 meters um when we start talking about 100 meters plus 200 meters plus where players are out of the aim assist range goes to keyboard and mouse but those mid-range fights it's really kind of 50 50 um, you have that benefit of the of the tracking with the mouse and key, but as long as aim assist is still a factor, I call them roughly tied. And the other thing that's going to really surprise people is sniping. I do not believe there is a big advantage for keyboard and mouse players. If you look at my recent guide, not recent guide, it's, it's one of the most popular videos on my channel, talked about the controller sniping guide. It'll completely change the way you think about sniping, but drag scoping and using the slowing of aim assist will completely change the way you snipe. And if you use that, once again, we're talking about not super long range, as long as aim assist is a factor, which for sniping still plays a role, you know, 200 meters away. I really don't think there's that big of a difference. Super long range, keyboard and mouse is better. But uh, on the whole, keep sniping on controller for a good player isn't too tough if you know how to use that drag scope to your advantage. All right. So now the moment you've been waiting for where a little bit of controversy may come in and where uh, someone might get a little upset with my answer. So if you've enjoyed the video so far, objectively looking at everything, make sure to drop a like on it now. Which one is better for Warzone? And while I can see the advantages and disadvantages of both, on the whole, for Warzone specifically, without a doubt in my mind, you are 100% at an advantage the majority of the time using a controller and let me explain why first off this is an opinion that is held by probably the people you respect most multiple clips of aiden 
saying he has Aiden, the number one controller player in the world, says that there is an advantage on controller. Huskers might be a little biased, but he is the number one keyboard and mouse player in the world. TP, a prior competitive CDL player who is very talented on both, or even his friend Doug is raw, who played competitive H1Z1 on keyboard and mouse and now plays competitive Warzone on controller. He was a prior competitive uh, uh, Call of Duty player as well. And then finally, J God himself all admit that the advantage is on controller. And let me explain why. I mentioned it once before, but I really have to harp on this. At long range fights, even at the super long range where the keyboard or mouse has the clear distinct advantage, there is time to react. There is a longer time to kill, more time to get behind cover. But a majority of the fights where you're playing everything right, you're playing behind cover, and let's say it is it is game on, you have decided you're going to fight this team inside of buildings, inside of close alleyways, controller has advantage, without a doubt. The fact that that aim assist allows it to stick to the target, and it, I'm not saying you don't have to aim, I'm not saying you don't have to track your target, but the average player can do it. Controller wins. That microsecond of a mistake on keyboard and mouse will cost you a gunfight, and for that reason alone, controller is superior on Warzone. Now, should you switch? Whether you're controller to keyboard or mouse or keyboard or mouse to controller, should you switch? I'm personally switching to a full-time controller player or maybe 80% of the time because I want to be the absolute best competitive player I can be. And when I'm playing 1v4s, 1v3s, those microseconds of mistakes will eventually add up to the point where I can't win squad wipes because I'm letting the opponent hit me one too many times. If you're an average player or you're just a casual player and you want to keep playing the game of Warzone, Keep playing what you're comfortable with, man. Switch, switch around to have fun, to get an insight on the other, other devices. But I would say the biggest determining factor is, do you want to play other games? Do you want to try and get better at, at Warzone and keyboard and mouse so that way someday you can play Counter-Strike or Valorant or Overwatch? Those are all going to be opportunities for you to try out keyboard and mouse and improve in the future. And that's frankly the reason why I've been playing keyboard and mouse for so long is I want to be a, I want to be a competitive player for future generations of games beyond just Warzone. But since recently, I've really full de dedicated this entire channel to Warzone, and we'll be playing this for the next foreseeable future. I want to get the most out of it, and I'm going to be playing controller. Uh, if a couple little piece of advice, if you guys are wanting to improve, no matter your device, if you're playing on controller, I would highly suggest keep grinding Warzone, focus on your movement more than anything. And if you have not picked up a scuff, I would really encourage you to check it out. Code Isaac gives you 5% off. While this I, this video is not at all sponsored by Scuff, it is a true advantage to be able to move and shoot and remap those face buttons. It is it is a clear cut advantage. Uh, if you're trying to get better on keyboard and mouse, check out things like AimLab. I, I recently started working at them. Um, and then I've also got videos in the past telling you the best keybinds as well as the best way to determine your sensitivity. On top of that, and for those of you who don't know, Aim Labs is like an aim training software. Um, but if you're really trying to get long-term success, and, and maybe you're trying to pick up uh, keyboard or mouse for the first time, Warzone is not the place to do it. Uh, you rarely get into gunfights, and if you do lose that gunfight, boom, you're out. You got to get into the lobby, and it's not a great place to learn. Overwatch, in my opinion, is the best game to learn keyboard or mouse. You've got snipers, you've got projectiles, you've got um, hit scan, you've got tracking, you've got flick shots, all these different heroes. You're playing against tanks that you have to like keep your tracking on for a long period of time. Overwatch is an incredible way, even though the game tilts the heck out of me, to learn new keyboard and mouse. Um, so yeah, I kind of rambled on there. I really wanted to make sure to provide some value for those of you who are, who are deciding to stick with or transfer over. Um, play for fun, man. Uh, try out both. I, I don't think, once again, any of this conversation should devolve into controller players are this, keyboard and mouse players are this, because at the end of the day, your positioning, your movement, your game sense all make so much more of a decision than, or uh, of an impact than your input device. But when it comes down to all those other things being equal and everything else is hitting the fan, controller is superior in my opinion. And that's why personally, I'm making the switch to being a full-time competitive controller player here in the near future. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I put a lot of time into building all the advantages and disadvantages, researching, asking what my peers think. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really hope you took something out of it, learned something new that maybe you didn't realize, some more insight about the other input device. I uh, hope you enjoyed the gameplay going on in the background, a little double 30 bombs on both. 
Um, if you guys want to catch me out live, make sure to follow me over on Twitch. We got an upcoming video. We're going to be doing a giveaway for a full custom scuff. That'll be happening on my Twitter. If you're looking for people to play with, make sure to join my Discord. And uh, if you enjoyed today's content, make sure to subscribe here. I'll catch you all in the next one.